Dorklair! Welcome to another Dorklair action figure review. Today I'm taking a look at the Super 7 Conan the Barbarian. This is based on the Marvel comics from the 1970s, and to me it looks like it jumped straight out of the page. Uh, this release took a while to come out. They had some delays with the packaging, which in my opinion turned out fantastic. But um, yeah, after those delays, they ended up adding a couple extra bloodied versions of the weapons. Uh, but I'm pretty happy with this figure overall. It's pretty great. You know, it's, it's kind of dated. It's based on the old Masters of the Universe Classics body, which I didn't collect that line. But um, I have a couple things from that body type. And um, yeah, this was supposed to come out with the, with the, with the uh, Masters of the Universe movie figures, the William Stout collection. Um, so this is, you know, that came out a while ago and that was delayed. So this, it's been a while, but it's well worth it. I think this figure is excellent. Um, again, it's a little dated, but for the most part, it's an awesome release. Let's get into this review. First up, a quick look at the beautiful packaging on here. Man, I am blown away how awesome this is, especially compared to the Masters of the Universe classics from the last set I got um, with those Masters of the Universe movie figures. But just straight up comic book all around the box. And then you have Conan the Barbarian on the back, a little bit of a glossy look to the lettering. And then the top of it, it's got the same logo there. Bottom's just got info. And then this piece slides right up so you can see the rest of the packaging, the window box here. There's some artwork in a mono tone on the side. That's got a little bit of glossiness there too. And then on the back, it's got the whole like Hyborian Age lore thing going on there and some more art on that side. And we saw the top already, but fantastic packaging. Taking a look at the sculpt paint and details on Conan. And I think that's kind of where this figure shines. Um, just some really great looks going on here. Got some multiple colors in the hair with that blue sort of comic black and then some black, um, you know, wash throughout. And this thing like is coming up shiny in the video, but it does not seem as shiny as it looks on my screen right now in hand. Bit of a metallic look to the helmet and some sort of bone paint work on the horns. And then his face here, the eyes are painted nicely. Um, yeah, great looking figure. These pieces are separate. So this neck piece, if you pop the head off, the neck, the, the uh, necklace will come off. Um, this stuff is sculpted in. But the leather looks great. The fur looks awesome. His flesh tone is not just solid. Sometimes I kind of expect these things to be just like a solid plastic, but it's definitely not. I do have a little bit of a, I don't know, a flaw right there, or some sort of bubble or whatever. Um, but yeah, one place where it's not quite right to me is it seems like this piece of the torso is not the same, doesn't quite match up with the rest. This feels more plasticky than this stuff. But you can see some shading. It's not just a solid color. There's definitely musculature shading throughout. Um, it's not Mythic Legions level paint job, but nor should it be because this is a comic book character and it's very um, cartoony in the book. Nice metallic look to the, uh, to the belt there. And then down into the leather straps here on the feet. The sandals look awesome. So pretty great looking figure. And then I'll just kind of show you a couple pages from the book so you can compare. So I have my omnibus right here. Anyway, just kind of cracking this book open to get a quick look at uh, how he looks in the book. Uh, you know, he's got the gold helm. I think I might have preferred it to be gold there. But um and then the, the handle's red here, but throughout it's it really is gold, the handle of the sword. Uh, but generally speaking, I think they did an incredible job of, you know, representing how this character looks in the comic. So nice work there from Super 7. For accessories, he comes with this second portrait that you can swap on and off. You can get a look at the style of the hair there. Lots of great sculpt work here. He comes with a sword. Pretty basic here, um, just a gold handle and a silver blade. And then he comes with a spear as well. Nice long spear. It's got these sort of metal wrappings around it. 
Um, very cool piece there. And then the make good, when they had the delays, they have the same sword with blood splatter. That's pretty sweet. And then the same spear also with blood splatter. So he comes with two spears and two swords. Um, the spear and the sword was packaged in a separate box uh, in with the shipping box. So if you got the figure, there's a separate box in there. Getting a look at Conan next to a couple other figures we have from the same pre-order wave, um, He-Man and Skeletor from the movie. Here he is next to a couple random figures, a Superman from the Mattel line from the Dark Knight Returns, and then um, a Mythic Legions kit bash that I did. Uh, and this guy now has a name, by the way, if you didn't see it on Instagram, this guy's name is the War Dork because he's kind of based on a figure named Ragor that was based on Warduke from D&D. And finally, here he is next to a couple Mezco figures. You have the brand new uh, MDX blade that I kind of skipped over that in the queue. I'm going to get to that review pretty soon. I have something planned where I'm going to compare it to another figure. But um, then you also have the Mezco 7-inch King Kong figure that kind of works really well as like a 8-man or Thok. Um, I picked up this random cape and put it on him and I know I kind of like that look. I'm, I mostly did that because of the Conan figure coming from Mezco eventually, but yeah, so there he is next to a few different figures. Finally, for the articulation, this is probably the weakest area of this figure, but you know, if you bought this figure, you kind of knew what you were getting with the old, um, classics body type. It's just, the, the articulation isn't amazing. Um, but the joints are pretty nice. The one joint I don't love is the head. For some reason, it doesn't move well. Like it, it just doesn't, I think the hair is sort of catching on the front of the neck a little bit and then the head just bounces back. So if you want to try to have them look down, you got to figure something out, maybe wedge something under there. I don't know, um, you know, but it does turn and the hair will kind of make it a bit tricky to move around. So the head really doesn't move very well. Um, you know, you have typical arm it only goes up that far um, but it does swing all the way around so if you do want to bring it up you can there is a swivel at the bicep single jointed elbow swings up this far and then the wrist will spin and hinge and this wrist has the same spin and the same hinge he's got that very clear joint at the torso um, not a ton of range there and then you can spin as well He's got great hips, in my opinion. Um, they twist, they have like an upper thigh cut, and then they can swivel out. He can kick forward, he can kick back. Um, so you can get him into some pretty good poses with his legs, which is nice. You know, when you combine everything together, he's got decent articulation for, for kind of an outdated figure. The knee bends less than 90 degrees, and then you have ankle pivot. Foot will point down very far, point up a pretty good amount. Um, so pretty good articulation in those in those feet overall. I'm very impressed with this figure. I Highly recommend it. I'm not sure if you're gonna find it for the $35 pre-order price um, You might have to spend 50 which is a little steep in my opinion I think 35 is kind of like that is a good price for this considering current um, action figure prices on the market net these days um, So yeah, uh, pretty great figure uh, and very happy to have it in the collection until next time May the force be with you oh, what's here?